Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And I'm here today, you guessed it, with another comparison video of the White Sox to one of their competitors in the American League. And in this particular case, the competitor is the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, if you remember, the Toronto Blue Jays are, they're kind of in a rebuilding phase, and they've brought up some of their um, young guys already, and they've already gotten a lot of their young guys some exposure. They've gone out and gotten a couple of free agents, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But before I get into this, I want to remind everybody, subscribe to the channel. If you watch even a few of my videos here and there and you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel because it helps me out. And even if you go a step further and you ring the bell, you'll know every time that I put a video out. So I just want to get that out of the way. But now let's get into it. Now first, you've got the White Sox over here. We always do the White Sox first, and I've talked about the White Sox several times. I have several past videos, and I will do a link to many of those in the description. But you've got the projected lineup here of Lewis Robert in center field, Timmy Anderson at shortstop, who was the American League uh, uh, batting leader, Johan Moncada at third base, uh, Jose Abreu at first, N. Canarcion at DH, who we just went out and got this year in the offseason, and another guy we just went out and got, Grandall at catcher, uh, Eloy Jimenez in left, um, Nomar Mazara in right field, who we made a trade with uh, Texas to get. And then you got the uh, Mendic Mandrigal connection at second base, with Mendic probably starting the year as the second baseman, possibly, or as a backup to uh, Lurie Garcia at second base. That's for uh, Ricky Renneria to decide based on spring training results, but we'll see. And then you uh, have the rotation of Gilito Keichel. Lopez, Gonzalez, and Dylan Cease, uh, quite possibly. Um, Keichel and Giolito, or, or Keichel, Keichel and uh, Gonzalez, we went out and got this year in the offseason. Giolito is coming off a breakout season. Hopefully he can maintain what he did last year. Uh, Dylan Cease, hoping he makes a step forward. He... Uh, was up for her. <clears throat> he was up for half the season last year, but was not that impressive in that half season of work. So uh, hopefully he uh, works on some things in spring training and comes out a little better than he uh, showed last year. But he was young and he was kind of forced into uh, the White Sox bringing him up early due to uh, injuries in their rotation. So. And we're also hoping for some steps forward. Uh, well, actually, just going back to what he was um, for Ronaldo Lopez. So then you got in the bullpen, you've got Kopech, possibly. He's coming off Tommy John surgery, and the White Sox may take it slow with him. He may actually be in the minors for a lot of the season. Uh, then you got uh, Jimmy Cordero, uh, Calame. Bummer, uh, Evan Marshall, Fulmer, possibly Fulmer, but it depends on how he performs, Jace Fry, Kelvin Herrera, and then the newly signed Steve Ciszek, who the White Sox also went out and got, so the White Sox have been busy. And, and then the bench would look like Lurie Garcia if he wasn't the second baseman, and then if he was, it would be Mendick. And then you've got a uh, mechanic catcher to back up, and then uh, Zach Collins, and then possibly Adam Engel, who is a great defensive outfielder, but has to work on his hitting still to uh, get a lot of playing time. So that's the White Sox. I mean, I've discussed them several times, and we look good. We're looking like we're ready to go for this coming season. But we will see. Um, 
So now over here you've got Toronto. And the Toronto Blue, Blue Jays, like I said, they brought up uh, many uh, young guys already. And uh, so they've already gotten some exposure. And that includes Bo Bichette, who hit 311 last year with 11 homers in 196 at bats. Kevin Biggio, who is uh, Craig Biggio's son, and he hit 234 last year, but he had 16 home runs in 354 at bats. You got Lourdes Goriel, who uh, last year hit 277 with 20 home runs. He's been on an upward trajectory lately in the last few seasons. Vlad Guerrero, their big star, who is the, uh, and it's says Vlad Guerrero Jr., who is the son of Vlad Guerrero, the Hall of Famer. And uh, last year he um, hit uh, 277 with 20 home runs. And then you got Travis Shaw. Now, Travis Shaw coming over from Milwaukee, he is, he is coming off a terrible season. He hit like 157 last year. So they're hoping for a big bounce back by Travis Shaw. Then you got Randall Gritchick in right field, T. Oscar Hernandez in center, uh, Danny Jensen at catcher, who also did not hit very well last year, 207 batting average, and then Derek Fisher quite possibly at DH. Now, the rotation, they went out and they got Chase Anderson from Milwaukee, and they signed uh, Rian Jin Ryu away from the L.A. Dodgers. So this um, instantly gives them some credibility in their starting staff. And then they also got Tanner Rourke. Now, Anderson and Rourke are really, they're inning eaters. They're, they're good. They're not great. They're not spectacular, but Ryu is. Uh, then you got, uh, over from Japan, you got uh, Shun Yamaguchi. And then for the fifth spot, it looks like either Schumacher or Thornton. And whoever doesn't get that fifth spot there between those two would probably go to the bullpen. The bullpen, speaking of which, has Ken Giles as the closer. Sam Gavilio will be out in the bullpen. He pitched... 95 innings last year, all in relief, which you don't see much anymore. However, he did have a 461 earned run average and wasn't all that great. Then you got Wilmer Font, Anthony Bass, Thomas Pannone, and Jacob, I don't know how to pronounce that guy's name, Jacob Wagespach. I don't know. And then, um, and then in the on their bench, you got possibly Brandon Drury. They're going to bring him to camp, and uh, it, it may depend on how his camp goes, whether he even makes the Blue Jays team or not. But he's a possibility. He's also a possibility if he makes the team for being the DH. And then you got Reese McGuire, the backup catcher, Richard Urena, and Rowdy Taliz. So that's their bench. So as you can see, the uh, the Blue Jays are still a work in progress. They still have their issues. They're not quite there yet. They're not quite ready for prime time. They are still going to be, um, on a limited basis, playing a limited number of games against them, as we are only playing six games against them or so. They, they could be dangerous because... Uh, if the, especially if the young guys take another couple of steps forward, could be a lot of trouble there. But they're not an overly dangerous team, especially if we miss Ryu in the rotation, which hopefully we will. And speaking of which, the games that we play against them this year will be in Chicago on May 14th to the 17th, and then in Toronto just July 1st and 2nd. So... And by the way, my wife's birthday is July 1st. Just thought I'd throw that out there. But anyway, so yeah, this is what you've got for the, uh, for the Blue Jays. Stacking that up against our Sox. Clearly, we're the better team. We got a better lineup. Uh, one through five, we got a better rotation. 
Um, and really, if Giolito is what Giolito was last year, he's just as good as Ryu. And then after that, it were clearly better. Um, the bullpen, I like our bullpen even compared to theirs. Uh, possibly Giles is a better closer than um, Calame or um, Kel Kelvin Herrera, whichever one ends up being our closer. But I don't think that's that big of a deal. So, yeah, I mean, I think we're better in. And then we have uh, the benches, you know, really they don't come into play that much, but I would say that they're at least, uh, uh, you know, it's at least a wash on the bench. So, yeah, we're clearly the better team. So I just wanted to throw that comparison out there to let you know that, hey, this is a team we got to play. Just like, you know, every team in the American League, we got to play them all, at least at some point. Um, but that's how we look compared to Toronto. What do you guys think? You think Toronto is a team to be uh, worried about when we play them? Because remember, we're not really worried about them in the standings because they're in the East. And we're also not worried about them probably uh, contending for the wild card because I don't think they're ready for that yet. But... Could they be dangerous in the five or six games or six or seven games that we play against them? What do you guys think? Do you think they match up well enough to be a scary team that we need to worry about? Or is that not the case? I look forward to the debate. And I will also be working on the other comparison videos. I plan to have them all out by, uh, well, not by spring training because that's like a few days away. But definitely before the season starts. But for right now, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.